Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Community Tech Data Hub Workshop, the 5G Bootcamp. At Community Tech, we're working hard to bring your businesses virtual as much as possible, while also supporting our members the best we can. Um, a few housekeeping notes. First, a reminder that this session is being recorded, so it can be shared at a later date for companies to view or refer back to. The slides will also be sent out to everyone attending today after the event. I'll ask that you please keep your microphones on mute during the, today's sessions. Uh, please use the chat functionality for any questions that you may have. Uh, we ask that you post your questions to the entire group instead of uh, messaging any one of us individually so that we can all have visibility to your question. A few more recommendations for today and uh, for tomorrow's sessions as well. So um, we ask that you please use the Zoom application instead of um, accessing the session through your browser. Um, desktop or laptop is preferred, and uh, for tomorrow's session, when we'll be granting um, um, remote access to the um, the 5G testbed, a Windows operating system um, would be preferred. And finally, the browser of choice is uh, the Google Chrome. Um, I'd like to thank Encore for supporting our advanced technology platform and making this Data Hub workshop possible. Encore is a partnership made possible in part um, by funding from the Canadian government and the provincial governments of Quebec and Ontario. In Ontario, Encore is coordinated by uh, the Ontario Centers of Excellence. With no further ado, I'd like to welcome our speakers today. Um, we have uh, Sebastien Rianco from Talis, Robert Lala from Ericsson, and uh, Hassan Futaine from Siena. Now I'll hand it off to Sebastien for the first word of this presentation. Sebastian, over to you. Well, thank you. Uh, this presentation today will be divided in three uh, in three sections. Uh, I will first make an overview of what is five G. Present you some five G use case at eye level and present you a little bit what is on core. After that, uh, Rob Berlala will present uh, from Ericsson would make an overview of the frequency, what is available uh, from equipment, IoT accelerator, what is available on Encore. And after uh, Asam from uh, Siena will make a presentation of the Encore network and the edge computing that we have. This is our today presentation. Tomorrow you will have a chance to, uh, to experiment with the platform on the virtual way, in the distance way. Today it's more a theoretic uh, section. Uh, tomorrow will be the practice, uh, the practice part. Now, if I start, what is Encore at eye level? It's a, it's a 5G band test. It's a pre-commercial equipment. It's a, a, a program go on four years that is finished in March, 2022. It's for technical and business support. It's a, your uh, funding program, you have a, an ecosystem, an open ecosystem. It's for every kind of organization, small, big business, uh, non-profitable organization, academic sector that want to experiment and develop around the 5G uh, case. It's not just to develop the technology of 5G, it can be the use of the 5G and thinking about new use case, what we can do tomorrow with 5G. Now, what it is 5G? Before to know you want to do it, what it is 5G? 5G, first, next generation of, of uh, communication, serve uh, communication, it will go faster. Yeah, it's nice to go faster. Every generation I go faster, but it's way more than just the speed, the next generation of 5G. The 5G will improve, the, yes, the speed, the number of the volume of data, also the consumption of energy. You will use less energy on your device to use a 5G equipment and 4G equipment. Mostly that is very critical on IoT about that. The latency, latency will be 10 times faster. The latency is critical for every control uh, system at distance because it's a time of response about that. Now, and then the, the speed of deployment, it will be, it's a way more virtual way that give a chance to the network to reconfigure at need that will help a lot to have a better performance when where you need it in the network, not just uh, an average performance about that. Now, it will really change the way we use data and and uh, the seraphone communication about it. Now, one of the thing is is the latency and the latency it's, uh, that I've just talked about, it will be passed from what we have today around 40, 
45 milliseconds to around one millisecond. Within one millisecond, it's maybe more laboratory, but in the real use case, we think, we can think about five to 10 milliseconds. It's still a huge lab. I have a little video to present you what will be the, the difference between the both. It's a soccer, it's a soccer game. And I'll let you enjoy in general the idea of this use case. They will present you, we'll let them talk. Okay. You're gonna feel the difference between 4G and 5G. We'll start with 5G, so put this on. Yeah, good. Marco, now it's 4G. Good. No, no, no. Skip us. Oh. Linus, can I switch? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. No, no, no. Ça, c'est de football. can look not that much but uh, when you are uh, when it's a controller imagine a, a, an autonomous car a couple of milliseconds more to, to break can make a huge difference uh, imagine a controlling uh, a robot by cloud computing a couple of milliseconds make a big difference now it's really depend of your application because on some application i understand if you send a tweet or text message a couple of milliseconds will not make the difference, but it will make the difference if you go on a on different some kind of application about it. Now, why 5G? It's do what we can do today, uh, but on a better way. It's to do what we arrive to do in a laboratory, but we don't arrive to do in a real life because 4G it's have a limitation of capacity, capability example when everybody is connected to do that. It's also to imagine new use case, new, new thing that we cannot do today that we will have a chance to do tomorrow through a 5G. Just to be sure, do everybody hear me correctly now? It's back. Yes. Robert? Okay, just want yeah, to be yeah. sure that uh, sure, you sure. hear me, that uh, I don't talk in myself in my basement. <laughs> Uh, okay, now what it is exactly 5G? We continue on that. 5G, first, you have most of people have heard about the frequency. And what when we hear about frequency, we hear about a lot about the millimetric wave uh, because it's, it's I, it will be dangerous, and so on. Uh, you can, this is, but it's way more than that 5G. 5G will use a way big spread of different frequency. We'll use low frequency, the 600 to 700 uh, megahertz that will be used uh, mostly for uh, IoT, Internet of, of Things. Uh, it's very useful, not necessarily high bandwidth, but low energy for some, if you install a, a device that just take temperature, you don't need that something that's very high, high, uh, high frequency or high bandwidth, but you want something that you can install in the field with a small battery and will stay for 10 years and don't have to change it. Now you want very low power and 5G will allow you that. You have also the, the, the sub six gigahertz that is uh, almost the same frequency of your router at your Wi-Fi at home or actually the, the, the surf phone that we have today that will be the, the core of the, the 5G network of to, tomorrow. And for specific place, we will have very high frequency the military wave and this military wave will allow you the very high bandwidth but have some older challenge there. Now, one of the challenge about that is, is exactly is the millimeter wave. Allow. What will be the deployment of a 5G? It's a lot more small antenna that will be integrated of the, uh, the example, the, the lamp on, on the city or other, other building, they are already there. It's not to build 
big antenna everywhere the idea is to use what we have and to install a lot of little antenna there i'll have a multiplication of the number that will have the uniform of the power over there will help to have no no big spot where you have no for, no access to the 5g that is one of the things. The other thing is we'll have a massive MIMO. Massive MIMO, it's a chance to have multi-frequency in a, in a upload and download will increase a lot of the cap, the, the bandwidth available and will also uh, reduce the latency uh, and improve the reliability of the system there. We have also the beaming forming. The beaming forming is you have to think about the idea of to uh, make a direction of the power where, where you want to go. You have no point to use all the power of your antenna to uh, where you have no device to communicate. Now the beaming will have a chance to to put the power of multiple beam in the in the direction of the device they want to go. Don't you optimize your energy and your um, availability about that? The other technology is the edge computing. The edge computing you can have the best frequency system, but if you install your computer in China and that uh, you still pass by fiber optic, it will take some time. It will take milliseconds and, and this almost seconds at the, at, at the point. Allow to install the, the computing at the edge will give you the chance to have a very low latency uh, performance there. Don't it's, it's different technologies coming with the 5G, but we will go way more in the detail uh, later about what we offer on Encore. And because we offer most of this kind of technology that you can test with the Encore bench test. One of the other thing it's, is the slicing. The 4G, it's a one network, best effort. Everybody has the same priority about that. The, the 5G will have a, a, what we call a slicing. The slicing, it's a different um, quality of service and performance of depend of, of your need. And you can say, yeah, but it's not fair. It's not democratic. Everybody about that. I would say me personally, if I cross the street and I want to send a tweet and you have a car, it's coming there. I prefer that you have the priority of the communication that my tweet. I'm ready to wait a second that my tweet go. I'm not ready to wait a second at the car break. Now, you have some applications, they need that bandwidth there. And some other, uh, it will allow those souls to transfer some application of people that deploy their own network system to be sure that they have that all the time. And one of the example on Thales that we work in Ontario, it's for the autonomous train. And today we have autonomous train, but we always deploy our own network system because we want to be sure that this works. Still, if you pass next to a stadium, if you have a big event is, is in the city, you want the communication to be there. But with slicing, and it's one of the, the things that we've, we, uh, we work in, in the Encore program, we can maybe transfer that on, on a what we call a public network, but a, a, telco, a telco network with a slice there. Now the slicing will allow us to transfer some, some uh, application today that they have to deploy their own communication system on, on a, a telco uh, communication system. Of course, it's not because tomorrow I deploy 5G that uh, the 4G disappear or the 3G disappear. They will stay there. They will stay, they will be uh, working in collaboration. A lot of the network can support all technology also to be backward or to, or to go. Uh, cybersecurity, of course, you have a lot of challenge with with five G, but it's a, a challenge that we have everywhere. Uh, you have to understand that when we deployed the four G was in two thousand seven. The normalization about cybersecurity. Imagine how much we have improved from that time. Now, of course, five G. It's think about. Uh, with the new technology and the new way to we think about cybersecurity of today. It's this triangle is to give you and um, go more in the use case. In the use case, you can see three different aspects on, on the 5G uh, of the 5G. You have more than that, but it's three important ones. You have the, the massive connectivity, the capability to connect a lot of device on 5G that you don't have in, in 4G. You have the low latency. And you have the high bandwidth, and you you see you you can place different use case at different place that will use different performance about that. Now the massive the massive connectivity is of course for all the use case with a lot of IoT, and 
and I insist on IoT because it will be a huge part of your experience tomorrow. You will use, uh, we will make you work with IoT and it's part of 5G because it's massive connectivity, because it's low power consumption that is there. It's, it's really in the normalization of 5G tomorrow. It's not, we are not able to make in 4G, but it will be 10 times better when we arrive to, uh, to 5G with IoT. Of course, you have the high bandwidth to use the capacity. Allow you will take about a gigabyte, to five seconds for server and so on. But you can think that about 4K, 4K uh, streaming, a 3D video. The low latency, you have self-driving car, uh, critical mesh, and so on. And you have some stuff that they are between both. Example: a camera. The camera, you don't need the low latency, but if you would, if you make uh, CCTV everywhere, but you want to have a massive connectivity, but at the same time, a relatively high bandwidth. You have um, all augmented reality. On all augmented reality, you want a low latency, but it's also a big, big data. It's not necessarily a big amount of, of device connecting at the same time. But now you see, you have different use cases. We'll use different or mix of this uh, new performance that you arrive in 5G. A couple of applications that you, you found in 5G allow you have the smart street lamp. In the smart street lamp, you can have a, a CCTV connect on that. You can have an uh, environmental uh, device that will take uh, CO2, noise, and so on to know what it is. You can have, uh, you, you can have uh, an antenna directly there to, to make available uh, the 5G of tomorrow. Autonomous car, yes, autonomous car work today without connection. But in the reality, you have two, two use cases today of autonomous car. You have on the highway, where on the highway they say, yeah, we see car around it, but they say, you need to keep careful when you drive. It's not the full little car that is driving because they don't detect, example, an animal crossing the street because it's not, they don't see very far in advance. Uh, they see relatively far in advance, but they see only metal about it. Now they don't see everything. Or you have the, the opposite, you have in the city, but in the city you have so much data to analyze in the same time. It's, uh, they, they need to be, um, go at slow speed there. Now you, you have really a car that make both and I'm still in both cases, it's all in the best condition about it. Now the fact to have 5G and have a communication to, uh, vehicle to vehicle or vehicle to, to X that we say in, in 5G, that will give a chance to have a lot of data from a communication standpoint of reduce the analysis of the, they have to do to have a better vision. Now the real autonomous car will probably come or 5G will help that. It's not the only point, but it's one of the point there. Uh, you have augmented the uh, reality uh, uh, in the car to help to drive, to see better the, the car around you, to see the speed, to see the direction that you go. That can help, uh, can be a use case. You have, of course, the IoT, you know, the distribution of the platform, the massive MIMO that will help with that. Uh, Video surveillance, or what I call CCTV more. Uh, yes, you have to imagine not, yes, today you have CCTV everywhere, but they all cable for, for communication and they all have power. You can think about in 5G on, on an event where I want to deploy a CCTV for an event. Uh, and during that event, I want to remove them after. But today I can, it's working. It's a perfect use case that in the lab, it's working very well. But if I have an event of, of 10,000 people, everybody will be on our cell phone at the same time and my CCTV will not pass because I need a relatively high bandwidth. But with a slicing, I can have a guarantee that this CCTV will work for my event and I can see what is happening in, in, the, in the event at the same time. At the same time with 5G, I will have a low consumption of energy. Don't, it can be more realistic to install that for a long period of time, a couple of weeks, a couple of months for the time of my event about it. And you have the cloud gaming. Today it's starting slowly, but the cloud gaming is, you imagine a little bit the same principle of, of the uh, Netflix where the, the video it's, it's in the cloud and you have a small device to see that, but tomorrow it will be the game will be in the cloud and you will just have the image of the, of the, of the game on your device. Don't give you a chance to have very low power or to play uh, a console game or computer game on, on, the, on your phone. You, for that, you need high bandwidth because you want to high, 
have a high image there, but you need also very low latency to, to able to play that game because when you touch the screen, you want a, a very quick reaction about it. Now it start to have on cable today, but you can imagine with the 5G that we can come on very device and for the video game industry that can make a big change about that. You have augmented reality. That augmented reality, you can imagine different use case, but in the use case, you, you need to imagine that you, you will work with a very small device which gives you the flexibility to work a lot. You have your example, the glasses, and the glasses, you don't want to carry your computer. What you want is to have only a small chip, a uh, serif chip that will receive the image. Now it's the same principle that the cloud computing where all of the computing happens on the edge of the computing, don't a very powerful computer that will send you the data and what you receive, it's only the image. Now you can have children uh, chasing an imaginary uh, animal in the field. You can think about tourists where you go to, uh, to see a, a place. The example, I'm come from Quebec City, allow you go on uh, where you have the, the big battle there and you can re-see that happening again. You can have, uh, Presential with your family today with COVID, uh, it's uh, it's a way to make more real to feel that you're both in the same living room about that for work and distance. And the last one is for it's an example of training. If you're a runner like like I am, by you will like maybe to run with a partner or with a coach, but you don't want something AV to carry on to put on your face. You want something like this, like like sunglasses, and, and to able to see it and to to share this experience with someone that is not really there. You have also to understand that 5G is something that will evaluate with the time. Allow today we have some kind of, of a, a small small use case. Uh, I will can think about transportation. In transportation, you can you can see that today will be a real time information uh, and discussion vehicle to vehicle. But tomorrow it will be the autonomous car. You can see that in healthcare system where today we. we we are more close to follow a, a patient in distance and tomorrow we will have a, an operation at distance. Now the 5G is also something evaluate with the time and, and with more and more performance about it. Now, it you, you will see that, uh, I will present that uh, slowly in um, what we have in IPASS where we have also an offer that it's pre-commercial, but in the pre-commercial it's, it's also a, make an evolution with the time that we are, what we offer. What we have offered last year is not exactly what we offer this year. We are more evaluated and what we will offer next, next year so will be better again. Now, what is Encore? Encore, like it was present re relatively uh, shortly, it's, it's a program that was put in place with three governments, the federal government, the government of Ontario and the government of Quebec. We have five anchor partners in this program. We have Ericsson that develop all the wireless communication. Um, we have Siena where it develop everything that is linked with um, fiber optic communication was essential in, uh, in uh, 5G. We have IBM that develop um, uh, some uh, photonic composants that go in the, the 5G. We have uh, Thales and CGI, they are more in the, um, what we can do tomorrow with the 5G, CGI work uh, in a smart grid environment, Thales in the smart city and transportation use case. And of course, we have a lot of OBNL to help us in Ontario, it's mostly OCE that is uh, managing all, all the access and all the possibility with the SME that we have in the academic. Now, it's also what is Encore? We have installed five hub where everybody have a chance to make tests or to evaluate to to see what it is the real five G. Now we have five hub: one in in uh, Community Tech, Kitchener and Waterloo; one in Toronto; one in Ottawa; one in Montreal; and one in Quebec City. Now, why, why Encore? It's to accelerate the market of your product and your service. It's not just product, it can be service, develop, a, develop prototype, test, make a demonstration. After you have, you have made your, uh, your development, maybe you want to make a demonstration to your client and where you do, where you go, if you don't really have a five, you can come to Encore and just make a, a demonstration. Uh, and of course, to, to what is an ecosystem is a connection between all the partner, all the, all the client and all the anchor firm to, to make that together because a big number of, of people transfer idea with academic, with everybody to, 
to, to make that progress. Uh, it's, a, it's an open innovation platform. It's a five, five sites uh, of their tree in Ontario, like I see uh, Morley, Waterloo, Toronto, and Ottawa. It's a request for, for proposal from Encore for project with finance there. Uh, we have, uh, I would say, simplify three program. Uh, the, first, the first program, it's a direct, it's a, it's a free access to IFAS. Every company that want to make an experimentation of one of their five five, five uh, hub or site, they can, they can make an, a quick application to OC. They will give them an application and they can come on the site. They will have the technical support on every site. They can do their test. It's completely free of charge. No cost about that. No cost for the data you use. No cost for the time that you use to support technical people. You come there, it's free. You can make an application. It can be a very short one just to make sure that your, your, your developer app and you just want to be confirmed that to connect on 5G and receive more data will have no impact. It can be way more complex than that. They have also a, what we call a demonstration project. You want to make a development uh, of, a, I would say, a new IoT, but at you to see that. It can be a, a solution. You don't need to be a, an hardware or something. It can be a solution. It doesn't need to be a, a, a device. But example, a device about that. You can you go to OC, you apply there, and you can have a program to your, you can receive until 50K that will reimburse half of your cost. Or if you make a project of 100K, you receive 50K of your cost of your cost there. We don't ask you to get out mon any money. It's really the, 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 the money you spend to pay your engineer, your developer, your, your personal that developed that solution that is reimbursed at 50%. And the last program, it's, uh, they, they have some challenge statement. They are published on the, on the Encore uh, website with the, uh, that they are linked with the Encore partner that uh, they have there. And you can work in collaboration with, uh, in Ontario with Thales, Ericsson, and Siena. Uh, depend of their challenge about that. If you if you think you can answer about one of their challenge, you you just apply and you can have a chance to to work with them and to have the most of your costs reimbursed. The two first program, all the IP that you develop, it stay in you 100%. No no question about that. You have to make a development. You own this. Uh, intellectual property is for you and the last one you have a share with with the anchor partner it's part of the challenge statement of the way and the negotiation you arrive to do that but the last one is a share the two first program it's about that it's about yours uh, technology i will make an overview very quickly about what is the platform we have we offer in technet but they will go way more in the detail after me in, in the presentation is just to give you a sh very short overview now the point the point was mostly to to see you see the evolution you can see that graph on the on website. Alors today we offer you can have a, a bandwidth to over around two gigabytes per seconds. Like you're very high, a low latency tens milliseconds. What is in circle is what we have today. Alors it's not uh, we have an over overall I, IoT system in place. We offer already millimetric wave with the 20, 28 gigahertz. We have a 700 megahertz, we have a 3.5 allow. We have really the full spectrum of 5G and you can make tests about it. It's a platform, don't you, you, it's an, an evolution. We offer also other tool. We have edge computing. We have a platform, IoT platform that is, it's available. We have uh, uh, some order to, tool that is offered by Siena that maybe Asam will talk very quickly. But it's really to tell you that we have a system, a complex 5G and offer all the spec, the spec that we that it will be available in 5G. Some are not necessarily available today. Example, the slicing is not yet in. It's coming in the end, but nobody in the commercial market offer today slicing also. It's it's coming down the road. Like I say in the beginning, 5G is an evolution. It's not because on the day one it's installed that everybody all the functionality will be. But they're all coming, and Encore will always be in the front of the parade to offer you that capability. Now, this is the IoT accelerator platform. It's just to an overview, but Robert will talk way more about it. Some question. If not, uh, we'll pass to Robert, but uh, I will enjoy to take any question at this point.
You can put a question in the chat or you can uh, open your uh, microphone if you prefer to ask them. If not, uh, Robert, all floor is yours. Pardon me. Sorry for that. Hopefully you see my screen. Is that uh, correct, 5G and R? Yes, I see it. Excellent. Thank you very much, everybody. Pleasure to have you here. Um, indeed, it's quite uh, quite interesting uh, with the uh, the advent of 5G. I'm always a little bit uh, intrigued by these the way these new technologies come to market. And I think a little bit what's unique about this 5G and specifically the market opportunity here is uh, many other industries or many other opportunities, the technology is just dropped on yourselves, uh, the enterprise, and you have to adapt and you have to quickly uh, pivot and understand the technology and understand how that can drive revenues for your business or reduce your operating expenses. Um, I give the example of the app store or such. It's only the big companies that get really insighted preview. Yes, there's developer drops, but I mean a real in-depth understanding, a comprehension, an ability to, to test and validate is rare uh, on these new technologies. So I think what's great about the Encore is it gives you that opportunity. What I'm going to try to explain is a little bit more details within the, uh, the 5G concepts and how my objective here is to convince you that 5G takes a part in increasing your revenues in 2021 in the first quarter. And I think that's because there's so many different types of 5G for so many different types of applications, but most importantly, it's designed for enterprises. And if it can't increase your top line, then hopefully it could reduce your uh, bottom line in one way or another. Sorry for the formatting uh, issue here, but it doesn't really matter. Um, in many ways, it's more of an opportunity for more usage. And these are what we call the pillars, where with 5G, we're able to do a lot more. But as I like to say, yes, there's always more Instagram or Facebook, but I think there's this huge opportunity, which is more business. Uh, when the operators ask us to go from 3G to 4G, I call it the jumbo pizza, which is we just took the regular recipe for pizza and just made it bigger. We didn't really have time. We didn't really have the focus. It was just more, more, more of what's called mobile broadband. But if you would go to an operator today and ask for 10 SIM, 10 SIM cards, they would basically offer you the bundle, but they have no way to give different qualities of service. So whether you take that SIM card and you put it in an iPad, an iPod, a connected car, or an, a, you know a temperature sensor, you're still getting 4G top pin, top quality all across the board. Although that's great, it's not conducive to new business models. The areas of uh, 5G are basically grouped into three main concepts, which is called uh, massive mi mission critical or um, machine communication, enhanced mobile broadband, and critical machine. So basically, if we look at all the different types of applications, we see things like AR, VR, and different uh, devices, uh, broadcasting. This is more of what's called, what we like to call mobile broadband. There's nothing wrong, but it's basically a lot more data. So it's very conducive to the speeds we're getting now at the Onco Hubs, the one or two gigs per second. Uh, but it doesn't, it, it doesn't correspond to the needs of the massive IoT market which is very low cost, very low energy, and a huge amount of devices. Um, so 5G will allow for certain things like, um, you know, up to a million devices per square kilometer. So we'll get into that. And then there's a whole other opportunity, which we like to call mission critical IoT. And this is, you know, as opposed to the massive numbers, it's more about very, very high availability and very, very low latency. And 5G, because of the core network and the elements that we were working with the operators and the devices is getting so finite that we can start to define a price point for uh, latency on the upload or latency on the download. It's really, really starting to cut these down and segment the business opportunity for you, the enterprise to use. In a way, there's also new segments. So 
This is what we call our existing segments, our mobile broadband, pardon me. And as I said, there's the new segments, which are the massive IoT and the critical IoT. Yes, as we said uh, today, you can get a CATAM1 narrowband IoT uh, device, which is the cellular equivalent to LoRa or Zigbee or Sigfox. But I think you could, once again, get about 100 to 150,000 per cell site, where within a 5G core, you'll get up to a million and the whole cell CPU just goes up by like 8%. So you get the ability to add a million devices, um, water meters or basically uh, connected fridges or any different device, uh, elevators, so on and so forth, for much, much lower CPU utilization on the operator, which in turn relates to a smaller price point for you. In addition, we also have the ability to do mission critical. So this is we're talking about mainly industry 4.0, autonomous robots, we're talking about uh, critical components that need a very, very precise location and positioning and all this kind of stuff. Uh, a, a secondary market is the concept of uh, fixed wireless access. So for those of you not aware, uh, fixed wireless access is the ability to install one antenna, for example, in a rural area, that's typically the main market. And this one antenna serves an entire village or a town and per house, they install a, um, a CP, which collects this, this 5G beam. And then, you know, there's a Wi-Fi router inside your house. So the idea is that this entire village or town, um, 50,000, 100,000, 250,000 people could be served by one fiber cable and one 5G antenna, as opposed to fiber to the home, which would require multiple, multiple uh, digging, cutting a sidewalks, cutting a streets. So this is an opportunity to bring uh, gigabit speeds all across uh, rural. Um, I think it's an interesting, uh, you know, area, especially with what's happening in Starlink. So it's a, you know, at the end of the day, we all benefit as consumers and we all be benefit as a technologist. So we we get to push forward the benefits. But it's an, also an, a very interesting field for those of you who are looking and saying. There will never be one gigabit in rural. Oh, my 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 farm, my agriculture is is far away. That's that's not uh, that's not the case. That's um, preconception that I think we need to change. In addition, we also bring a lot more capacity. So capacity is a couple of different factors. Uh, one is what's called available spectrum. So what we've done in 5G to add available spectrum is we've added new spectrum. So 5G is not like uh, 4G, where if you were uh, uh, of my age, you basically had these world phones and there was the whole thing. Is it 1800? Is it 1900 megahertz? And there was a whole discussion. Do you have all the bands of the world? And then there was the world phone uh, concept. Um, but it was still one band, basically. Maybe it was different in different parts of the world, but the same band was used for upload and download. Now we have three bands. So we have the 700, we have the 3.5 and, uh, and the 28. They're typically called low, medium, high band in 5G. So the first thing to understand is, hey, in 5G, we got a lot more spectrum available to us. One of the negative parts, or I should start with the positive parts of when you go up in spectrum, you get a lot more uh, bandwidth. But one of the negative parts is the propagation is very low. Uh, compared to the lower bands. So the lower bands, for example, in BIoT, we've done tests 100 kilometers away from an antenna and there's still connectivity, where millimeter wave is probably measured in a couple of hundred meters, up to seven, eight, 900 meters, maybe a kilometer. So in order to circumvent that, you need to basically add more sites per square kilometer. So we call that cell density. Um, and that's where we have the idea of installing smaller cells in more specific areas to augment that. I think this picture basically shows the difference where 4G was just big cells, and now we'll have many more smaller cells. At the end of the day, it'll be a lot more uh, productive for us as user. Lastly, there's a concept of efficiency. Due to some new technologies like spectrum sharing and the carrier aggregation, uh, we're allowed or we're able to use one bandwidth for the upload and one for the download or put together all the assets of the operators in all the spectrum and combine that and utilize that for the best capability. One test that we Ericsson did uh, just a few months ago was five gigs, five gigabits uh, download speed by aggregating four different 
um, uh, spectrums that one operator owned. So when you put those all together, the net of that was that we were able to achieve unbelievable speeds. So the network, you know, has really, really evolved. Um, but that's just really a few tip of the iceberg. So we'll get into some of the other things. So as I explained, 4G had a much smaller uh, range of bandwidth. And when we get into 5G, there's much, much higher different type of spectrum available. In addition, because we're doing these, these, uh, these little sites or many more different sites, one of the technologies we had to have is this beam forming. The beam forming, what it is compared to a current 4G antenna, a current 4G antenna has an omni signal, implying that the closer you are, the better the signal, the further you are, the worse it is. Now we don't see this because as we get further away from that antenna, typically there's a, a secondary antenna that we pick up. But with the technology of beam forming, what we do is we're able to focalize and give directed quality of service to the handset independent of their distance. So it doesn't matter if you're close or far, what's more important is the quality of service that, that you've paid or, or are looking for. So the idea of the connected car compared to the IoT sensor. Everybody's getting exactly what they need. And this is much more efficient on the operator side and they're able to pass these, these benefits to you. Another interesting concept, as I mentioned, is the ability to basically connect so from one major site and a smaller site, the device is able to connect to two different antennas at once, as opposed to handing over. And this is a bit about the spectrum sharing and the aggregation, the ability to connect these two. Uh, additional items in 5G that are unique is the ability to do device-to-device -device communication. This is very important when it comes to uh, what's called vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication, V2V or what's called V2X. V2X could be vehicle to anything. It could be vehicle to uh, the lamppost. It could be vehicle to the traffic light. It could be vehicle to, the, uh, to a pedestrian or to a bike or so on and so forth. And this communication happens independently of the, the cell tower because there is a need to communicate directly to avoid a crash or an injury much more local. And this, is, this as well is all part of the uh, standard definitions of the cellular 5G opportunity. Um, I, I can't see questions because I got my full screen. So if there's any, I'll, I'll pause, please. Uh, uh, don't be concerned. Um, as I mentioned, there is a go-to-market strategy when it comes to 5G. There is an opportunity space and it does have its benefits and, and trade-offs, which is um, when you have the low bands, I think this is a good way of uh, demonstrating it, the low bands are what's able to cover the nation very easily. Because it's a lower band, it has a much greater propagation and we could cover. In fact, these are the current 5G networks right now that are deployed. When we come out and say we're five, well, for, we are nationwide 5G, it means that we're you know, basically on a low band. There's also the idea of what's called the, the mid band, the 3.5, the 2.5, and these are being deployed slowly throughout the major cities, starting with downtown, business centers, so on and so forth. And we get our, our trade-offs. And so we get a lot more bandwidth, but we get a lot smaller coverage, but the latency goes down. So it's all about finding the right mix and the trade-offs. Luckily for you as an enterprise, all this is being taken care of from the operator. All you need to know is that 5G is not coming in 10 years or five years, it's already here. And there's a lot of benefits available to take advantage from your products. This is a little bit the same thing. And one of those key areas that we think is the, the, the I call the low hanging fruit is the concept of the cellular IOT. Uh, beyond, uh, we'll, we'll go beyond the, the big business, but in many ways we don't talk about IOT anymore because everything becomes an IOT. So we focus on 5G and AI networks, the, the ability for us to use AI to make 5G as efficient and as quick to install and as cheap to install. We understand that 5G networks can't be complex or difficult or else there's other you know, uh, competition towards that technology. But what we're trying to say is we understand it's our objective to make it as quick and easy to install 5G for the operators. Having said that, the IoT market, uh, we'd like to separate it into what we call the, the four areas. And some are existing, 
for example, smart metering and broadband IoT, but some are completely brand new, like industrial automation, uh, time-sensitive protocols, Ethernet uh, over 5G, um, collaborative robots. These are brand new opportunities. Um, in general, uh, our view, our position is that in this field, if you're in the massive IoT or broadband IoT, so I draw a line kind of here, and if, if you're in any of these businesses, um, you should have some kind of cellular component involved. With the technologies like NB-IoT and CADM1, that I'll explain some of the benefits, five to 10 year battery life, uh, data rates uh, as low as $1 a month, there is an opportunity to add value to your product with some of these technologies. And you'll see that in the demo tomorrow. This critical IoT, this is a 12 to 18 months window and industri full industrial IoT, I think is a 24 month plus. But I think the real opportunity is today and Encore supports enables you with these technologies is NB-IoT and CADM1. So what is CAD, uh, NB-IoT and CADM1? This is a little bit about the deployment. I'll slip that, it's a bit too, uh, too specific, but very importantly, NB-IoT and CADM1 are technologies that are cellular based internet of things technologies. The reason we've developed these is really not to compete uh, specifically against Zigbee, LoRa, or such, but it is to provide a cellular uh, capability to IoT. And we've done it, and we've really attacked all the main parts. So we've reduced enormously the complexity in the chipset. So the equipment manufacturers, all the equipment manufacturers, uh, Ericsson, Nokia, and such worked with all the device manufacturers, all the Altairs, the U-Blocks, the, the Qualcomms of the world. And we've had to define and make very tough decisions to simplify the chipsets as much as possible. So that today, a CAD M1 or a narrowband IoT module modem is in the $30 range, and depending how many you buy, can drop to the single dollar range. So we've really reduced the cost of this modem and device. Then we've gone and we've added um, you know, an industry leading battery life to it by a couple of different uh, mechanisms, power saving mode and EDRX, that's on the network side, which are compliant with the chip. So of course, this is depending on polling, depending on your traffic mo uh, profile, but a typical IoT device, shall we say um, um, temperature or gas meter that gets polled uh, once, uh, once a week or once every couple of days for a device, wakes up, sends the data and goes down, we expect five to 10 year battery life. In addition, we've given it a lot better coverage. As I mentioned, a typical antenna was able to reach uh, about 30 to, let's say 20 to 40 kilometers. So a typical antenna, you can get a, a cell phone call 20 to 40 kilometers away from that. However, with NB-IoT, and it's well documented in the press, we've done tests up to 100 kilometers away, where that device connected to this antenna still gets coverage. So when people say there is no coverage in the farms or the agriculture or the area, what they're saying is there's no telephone coverage, but there very likely is NB-IoT and CAD M1 coverage. You're probably just using the wrong chipset to communicate with it. And then more than that, we enable a huge amount of devices for the operator. We have solutions like network slicing that enable them to really tailor, you know, flattening the curve, it's the term of the year, I guess, but to basically take those peaks away so that they could manage it so it could become much more efficient on a network and they could offer you better price. In addition to, uh, let me see, I apologize. No, I didn't have it. The two different, uh, um, analogies I use between NB-IoT and CADM1 is in a building, the gas meter that's in the basement that requires very far propagation because of the cement and it doesn't really move much, NB-IoT is the better technology. But for example, the elevator that goes up and down, we believe that CADM1 is advantageous because the M for mobility, so it also handles handovers, let's say for tractor trailer trucks or things that require mobility tracking but it also supports voice, which enables a huge amount of use cases like E911 calling or support calling. If any of you, your businesses, you have an idea to provide a button, you can basically on one of your machines, install a battery uh, device, very small with a push button to call support, for example. 
no dependency on wherever it is, anywhere in the world. They push the button. It makes a full voice over LTE call, a 1-800 call to your call center. And the person standing there saying, hey, I got a problem. This machine is doing X, Y, Z. I need support, et cetera, et cetera. Um, why are these technologies? Well, more or less, it's important to understand that if they live 10 years, they need to live in 5G, which means that by the time these devices end their battery life, 4G will probably be deprecated. So hence why they're considered part of the 5G ecosystem. Um, we went over to smart city and the critical IoT. Uh, now I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the IoT and more specifically going into the presentation for tomorrow. So the, uh, the platform that we'll use tomorrow is basically a IoT accelerator platform. So it's very similar to any of the IoT platforms you use today, let's say particle board or something. It's a backend connectivity management that basically provides networking, connectivity, and device management of data. So in summary, we're gonna be looking at this part tomorrow, which is connecting the device and collecting data on it and exposing that data forward. Uh, if you will, and another way to look at it is basically um, we'll receive the data from the, from the sensors, from the temperature sensors and from the cameras. You'll set up these devices in our device database management. We'll configure them, we'll collect the data, and then you'll expose the data in some kind of application layer to forward face see the data. Um, this is the last uh, point. When you think about objects and devices and smart objects, there is a hierarchy that needs to be respected with regards to establishing a device. So it's just not a temperature sensor. It is in a way, but it's a location, let's say, uh, you know, Ontario, that a gateway is installed at such a building. And then it's a basically a device, which is a, a thermostat. And then there's a temperature, which is the object. And then there's the actual resource, which is the reading itself. So it's important to keep that in mind tomorrow when you do your exercise, as you're defining objects, that uh, you know computers need to have things broken down. So there's different uh, layers uh, to it. So once again, this is like the network. So this is what's considered a, a network, which is the 5G network, a location, you know, might be a specific location. A gateway could be a device that has the cellular connectivity, because maybe this, this device doesn't. So there could be a gateway in a building. It may or may not have a gateway. Uh, you have a device, which is basically a temperature uh, monitor. So in this case, it's a a device which has uh, um, captured devices. So it could be temperature, humidity, oxygenation, air quality, so on and so forth. So this is a device. And then you get the smart object, which is the CO2 reader, the battery, the GPS location. And then lastly, you get the resource, which is the actual data. So once again, it's just a reminder of when you define your object uh, tomorrow and way before the data gets collected and onboarded by the device and exposed, there's a bit of a hierarchy to keep in mind about how you define objects. And once it's properly defined, then all the data flows into the system. That's it. That's, uh, that's my presentation. Hi, I'm Hassan Futaina from Siena. Let me share my screen. Can you see my screen now? Yes, yes. you can. Thanks, Susan. Okay. Thanks, Robert. Okay. Thanks, uh, Sebastian, and thanks, Robert. Uh, and uh, welcome all to this uh, bootcamp, to the theoretical part of uh, the bootcamp. As I said, I'm Hassan Futaina from uh, Siena. Um, I'm going to go through uh, the Encore network, uh, the innovation platform, and um, generic use cases. Then uh, I'll talk a, a bit about edge computing and what, why, and what do we have for you 
Uh, I'm going to talk about, uh, uh, touch a, a little bit about uh, maybe Sienna Emulation Cloud and the devices used in this uh, program, what we can offer uh, and so on. So uh, let's uh, start um, without uh, delay on the uh, network, Encore network. Um, the network, as uh, my uh, colleague Sebastian and uh, Robert mentioned, that uh, the program uh, Encore, we have uh, uh, five hubs in the program. We have uh, Waterloo. Uh, let me point. We have Waterloo, Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal, Quebec City, and we have the core is in San Laura. Uh, in Montreal. The network is connected up and running and is being used by many people uh, so far. Uh, and uh, again, uh, it's uh, for uh, mainly for research, development, innovation, and uh, researchers to, to, to use it for their research. So when we de develop this network, and develop the connectivity to this network, we took into consideration that it will, it will be for innovation, it will be for development, and to uh, cover as many as we can from uh, use cases, and to serve as uh, like real network, and in same time as a huge lab that you can do your test on it. So, uh, we thought about different way, how to connect it, how to host your application, how to connect from end to end, and so on. So um, let me start now. This part, as I said, it's uh, is the uh, Encore firm partners to connect, develop, and uh, do all the necessary connectivity uh, on it, which is now uh, up and running. But again, uh, one more comment here that the 5G is a journey. It's not a destination. What we did in a, few, a year ago is different to what we have now, and it's different than what we will have in future. We keep developing the network. Whenever we have any new software or hardware, we upgrade the, the, the network. So it's a, it's a journey for us, similar for you, for everyone who's developing 5G uh, applications. So um, first of all, when we look at the connectivity to the radio part, this is the radio part and it's uh, uh, identical in everywhere. So the connectivity to the radio part here, we have in, in each of these hubs, five hubs, we have the three bands, low band, mid band and high band with all the specification that Robert talked about it for, for low band, mid band and uh, high band. Uh, and uh, that can be used by different uh, applications. Again, it depends on your application. You may need CATM1, you, need, you may need MBIoT, or you may need something else because you have uh, high throughput or you have, you need, uh, low latency or uh, it's it's all uh, depends on your use case so we have coverage for the three different bands available in every hub first second uh, we can provide encore we can provide 5g devices for you that means you don't need to worry about the devices from where I can get, which I, which band it will be used and so on. We have phones, we have CPEs or routers, we have uh, uh, MB, uh, IoT, CAT M1 kits. We have multiple equipment that, uh, multiple devices that I, I'll go through uh, uh, later on, on this presentation. So in other words, if you are developing application, you are the uh, software application or hardware that you want to connect it to the 5G, you are not specifically developing the 
five uh, the the five G modem. That means you don't uh, you don't develop this piece of hardware and the five G modem. Then we can provide you with equipment that you can connect it to this five G through Wi Fi, USB C, or through Ethernet. So you don't have to worry about it. If you are developing a hardware that you want to test it with 5G, you need to take into consideration the bandwidth that we have. This bandwidth, we got it from the government. You need to be uh, to take it into consideration. We can provide you with the SIM card where you can put it and you can test it. So uh, all these different cases is taken care of. It's a matter of uh, how you want to test your, uh, how you want to connect to the to the 5G wireless part. One thing here, just uh, that you need also to take into consideration that the coverage is not that high cover. We don't have a big or huge coverage. That's because of uh, the uh, the uh, agreement with the government. Since this is not. Uh, the, the network is, uh, again, it's for uh, development and research. It's not commercial. And so that's why the government wants to keep this uh, coverage, the coverage limited. So eventually, when you want to test your application, you want to connect to the radio part, you have, uh, you can come and sit indoor. We have indoor antennas where you can do your test. We have a room what we call it white zone in every uh, hub where you can come. You, of course, you need to work with the tier one to book a time and then you can come sit and test your application. Or outdoor, outdoor, it's, uh, you can test it in the streets around the hub or in the parking uh, uh, of the uh, building. Uh, it's uh, again, uh, the, 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 the coverage, uh, depends on the frequency, but regardless of this, it's not that huge coverage. It's uh, you need to be around the hub itself, like one to two kilometer around the hub to be able to connect to the radio part, which is, uh, uh, I mean, again, it's because of research test and research. So it should be good uh, for, for, for you to continue testing or developing your application. That's from the radio part to connect to the network. So then now this data where you want to process it. Again, we thought about different way on how to process it. It can be, you can have your application in the, uh, on, on a laptop, for example, where you are developing this and then we can, connect you to the network. We can provide you with physical port with VLAN and we'll provision it uh, for you. Uh, we'll provision it uh, for you from end to end perspective. Other way is to have it on the cloud, which is the common way to have your application in the cloud, or you can have it in your office or edge compute on uh, edge compute in the hub. So eventually I can summarize this from end to end perspective is as follow. Your application in the cloud, you want to access it here. You have a phone or CPE connected to your car or drone or robot or whatever. This will be connected to CPE or phone or uh, CATM1 kit, whatever will be connected to the 5G. Sienna Ericsson will provision everything from end-to-end -end perspective, so you will have full connectivity. Other option, as I said, is to come to the white zone with your laptop then, and this, uh, as I can see, it's uh, useful for the researchers, especially universities, PhD students or whatever. They are developing something and they, are, they can carry it and they can do the test. It's not uh, the commercial way in future, uh, but it's for research testing and even for the start uh, testing application for a, a, any company. Anyway, this is available. Uh, other option is you, you want to keep your application in your server, in your office, then we can provision IPsec tunnel 
from end to end perspective. Of course, the IT team uh, of Encore will work with the IT team of your company and then uh, we'll have all this connectivity because we need to provision the gateway here and you need to provision the gateway here and to have the full connectivity for IP sector. And the last one, which is uh, very important, is the edge compute. The edge compute is a way to uh, bring the compute as close as to the source of the data. In this case, the uh, uh, the process of the data will be will be uh, uh, fast or very fast. It will be local, and it doesn't have to go through all the way through the transport and the, through the internet. the uh, the uh, The process will will be um, local, as I said. Um, what we have, we have deployed uh, this solution in every hub. I, I put it once, but it, uh, in fact, is is in every hub we have this uh, solution. I'm I'm going to talk about it in in, in more details in the coming slides. But that's uh, this view summarizes the network and connectivity from wireless perspective where you want to host your application, how you want to connect it from end to end. And uh, I really hope that this gives you a clear idea of the network, the connectivity, and what we are looking for when, if you, when you submit your application, if you are, uh, if you plan for your, your, uh, your system, for your, for your test, uh, for your uh, solution, and you want to test it, to put this in, in mind. So how do I want to have it from end to end that um, in this case, we can discuss it and we can provide you with all this connectivity uh, for your, um, for your, uh, project other thing is uh, to talk about it uh, briefly is uh, sienna emulation cloud sienna emulation cloud is a cloud based software development environment it's designed to help uh, the users create and customize applications so the physical equipment of this sienna emulation cloud is located in sienna lab so as you can see here this one is not connected directly to the network. It's in Sienna Lab. We are offering uh, equipment and connectivity so to develop your uh, application if you need. I mean, it's again, it's one option if you are if you want to take it into consideration where you can upload your application in in the equipment in in the lab, and then you can test and fine tune your application. Uh, it's available 24/7. You can do whatever you want. It's uh, full potential. It uh, unlocks the full potential API providing uh, development uh, portal. You can innovate. You can do whatever you want. And then after you finish your development in the lab, you can move it either to the cloud or you move it to the Encore compute. So you develop it here, you move it to here, you move it to here. Uh, it's up to you. Again, it's not connected. It's an option. If you want to use it, let us know. It's available. It's free 24 7. You can use it. That's in nutshell, it's a high level of what we have in the network. Now, in some more details about uh, some uh, points that I mentioned, first is the edge computing. The edge computing is a networking method where uh, we are focusing on bringing the computing as close as possible to the data source. We have, this is the data source, the creation of the data, it can be processed in the cloud, similar to what we have most of the application now. You have it in the cloud, you data creation here, and you process it here. That means the data should go through the transport and then through the internet or whatever to the cloud data center. This data center could be a few kilometers away from this data creation area or could be uh, hundreds kilometers away. 
other option is to uh, to process it at the edge in this case you will save this time so what's the benefit is the latency the latency is the main driver for for this edge compute application and uh, of course it will uh, enable the near real time data processing so uh, that's basically the two uh, two different way of processing it let's let's take an example on this to make it clear we have uh, we have a driverless car where we have different applications and this car in a position in a situation where they it needs to communicate with the uh, ai process or algorithm or whatever to uh, avoid the accident or to deal with the specific uh, situation so this car will be connected to the 5g radio and then to process this data this could be this way And again, this could be somewhere far from the car, and this may take 30, 40 milliseconds, or could be this way, where the, it will be processed in the edge compute. So this will take few milliseconds. This will take, we don't know, 40, 50 milliseconds, depends on where the cloud uh, data center is. So then uh, the latency in this case is critical. Like uh, the faster processing of the data could be difference between life and death. That's the main driver. And that's uh, just one of the examples to do, the, to do with. So how we can reach to this low latency? The low latency, we achieved it by combining the new radio, the new radio that Robert talked about it in some details, with the virtual EPG with the edge compute. New radio, uh, Robert talked about it. Virtual EPG, what's this? It's we used to process the data here in uh, EPG, a vault packet gateway or a, a vault packet core where it's centralized it will be processed and then will be sent to somewhere like the data or to other phone other network whatever uh, it will be processed here and sent while in the 5g there is a new way of we have the epg but we have also the virtual epg virtual epg is as a result of the new technologies of uh, and new researchers and the, the revolution of the uh, virtualization so then we can virtualize what we used to be here we can virtualize it in the hub itself so then this vir virtual epg will work with the new radio and will send the data to the edge compute which is in the hub or close to the hub in this case the whole uh, uh, latency will take like a few milliseconds instead of taking longer time so this is one example just to show you and to visualize how this uh, uh, edge computing uh, is working now uh, this is uh, a few examples uh, about the use of the edge compute uh, we have uh, we I, I give an example about the uh, autonomous uh, vehicles uh, this is one clear example there are multiple uh, examples like in the industrial automation and predictive maintenance imagine that you are in a huge factories with thousands of employees and so all these machines are connected and there are algorithms and the AIs and so on for the machine for the factory to work properly so if something happen and uh, you need to process the the, the 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 status the new status the millisecond makes a lot of difference it may shut down the factory uh, it may cause a lot of delay in the production and so it needs to 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 be uh, processed as fast as possible in, so this is one of the example in the industrial in automation. 
and uh, of course, uh, predictive maintenance. Uh, remote uh, diagnostic, remote surgery, this is another uh, area. Augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality, all these cases. It, uh, in fact, it depends on the, on the use case. If your case is really uh, time sensitive, then you need it. If your case is not, so you may not need it. So it's all uh, depend on the, uh, on the service. Uh, other thing for the telecom company is uh, SDN, Software Defined Networking, where required local processing to find the best route to, to send the data. This is also critical for the telecom. So in, in summary, um, uh, for the edge compute, the main benefit, of course, for the edge compute is the low latency. So do we need edge compute for all uh, services? The answer is not really. So uh, low latency is needed for the uh, application that they need real uh, time uh, or near real time processing, while the, uh, uh, it's, if the latency is um, uh, insensitive for your application, you can uh, keep using, uh, you don't have to use the edge compute. So uh, the, the, the beauty about the 5G is the flexibility so 5G will give you all these uh, options. It will, it, it's very flexible and uh, depends on your service. And then eventually, while uh, of course the Encore uh, program is, uh, is uh, free for it's, uh, of course it's a free, but in future the service, the cost associated with the service uh, will depend on your service, on what you need, what's your requirement. So for edge compute, for example, if we go back to the, the driverless car, if you want to have this low latency, the car manufacturer in coordination with operator, with the cloud provider, they need to distribute their application everywhere as, as much as possible and if possible in every hub. So that means they will have resources in different location here, there, 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 that means that the user can connect to the, the user can connect to the uh, application uh, to the nearest application uh, in, uh, in in fastest way, then it will add extra cost and extra like complexity for uh, to to the network in order for the uh, everyone to access it uh, as soon as possible. While this one could be centralized, that means um, you deploy it and everybody can access it. So it's uh, uh, it depends then on you need it or not. You need it or not. And um, that's how it, it will work. It's flexible. And uh, again, uh, it, when we have the slicing uh, in the 5G, there is uh, um, that uh, uh, Sebastian talk about it, which is slicing, then everyone will get his slice from the network and the slice depends on your application. And even slicing, there will be different way of slicing. Um, uh, warm, sli uh, soft slicing and hard slicing. And so it's a, it's a complicated tool. The, the whole purpose of this is eventually to provide everyone with what he needs and exactly what he needs. You don't have to spend a lot of money for something you don't need it. And in same time, if you need this, you have it. So that's the uh, idea here. We have the flexibility, we have all possibilities, and we are offering in 5G, it's available, and we are offering here as part of our network. So uh, the, 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 it's uh, eventually, it's a trade-off. It depends on what you need. You need low latency, you need, uh, uh, it's not, latency is not that sensitive, and the application you are working on, we can accommodate it here. We can find the best way for you uh, to test it in, in the network. And of course, we can have a discussion. What's your view, what we can offer and to come up to uh, uh, something uh, that will be tested and that uh, eventually can be commercialized. The whole idea is for your project is to test tested, make sure that it can be deployed in 5G. And if, uh, even 
uh, the good thing about it is, uh, again, since we have multiple choices, you can test multiple choices. So many of the applications that uh, we've seen so far, uh, people, they want to test it with, for example, uh, the edge compute uh, and uh, cloud, test the difference between the performance, test if that can be, uh, can work in the uh, cloud, in, in the cloud, or the quality will not be uh, that good that they can commercialize it, or they can offer it even in two flavor, like depends on the uh, service itself and what the customer needs. Now, uh, Encore 5G compute solution. For the Encore, for the uh, our network, what we did is we deployed servers in every hub. This is the hub. The servers are deployed in every hub, connected. So as you can see, everything is collocated in same building. We have the 5G radio, we have the EPG, we have the edge compute, and we deployed it as a solution. Like this is not bare metal. That means when you ask for edge compute, it doesn't mean that you are going to get the server. That no, it will be it will be uh, it will be a full solution with VMs. With uh, it's based on Red Hat OpenStack platform. Uh, we will need to understand your uh, needs, your uh, requirement, and then we can virtualize uh, your need. We can create a VM for you with virtual CPU, virtual RAM, virtual storage, and uh, if you need GPU, we have GPU. We created. We provide you with all the can connectivity from the uh, from uh, as Encore. We provide you from the connectivity from uh, the radio all the way to the edge compute. Then we uh, then uh, you move uh, with uh, uploading your application and you develop it, test it, do whatever you want with these resources. We provide you with resources, connectivity, and then you continue. So uh, again, it's uh, the servers have been deployed everywhere. They are uh, at the bottom of the antenna. That means uh, the latency will be uh, uh, the minimum. That's what we have in uh, uh, Encore available. To, to give you just uh, now a little bit view of the details, of course, you, you don't care about this equipment and so on, but just to give you, uh, just uh, to have a good view about the network, this is every hub here. We have the radio part, we have this equipment, we have the aggregator, we have the cell site routers, aggregator, and the transport part. The edge compute is in every hub. We have edge compute, edge compute, edge compute. So if you are in Waterloo and you want to connect uh, to the edge compute, can be go all the, this way. Or if you want to go to the to the cloud, it will go all the way to the cloud and then to the uh, sorry to the cloud through the transport and then to the uh, through the internet. So um, that's uh, that's uh, to give you a quick uh, overview of the how the network looks like looks like. Now, moving forward uh, with uh, this uh, talking about uh, the bands, um, uh, I think Robert covered it uh, from technical perspective. What we have in Encore is we have we can we have uh, coverage for these three we can support these three band mid uh, low band mid band high band and that's the bands available for the low band we have band 14 so if you are working on uh, equipment uh, devices that you want to connect it and uh, you, ha you have your own uh, equipment uh, then you need to be aware that we support band 14. We can uh, connect you, we can provide you with the SIM card. Uh, if you need our equipment, we have a kit, I will talk about it, that supports this band and that can connect you. We support from the mid band 3.5 gig, we support band 40 and 78. And for the millimeter wave, we support the 28.5 gig, we support band 40. Uh, N261. 
So uh, again, uh, uh, Robert uh, and uh, Sebastian talks about the specification of this. That's just to show you what we have in, uh, in Encore. We have uh, the uh, devices that we can provide you. We have multiple devices with multiple specification and uh, interfaces uh, all the available for you. Depends again on your application. We have uh, the WNC. Uh, I'll show you the WNC in a few, in a couple minutes or one minute. We have the Oppo. 5G, Oppo Reno 5G, it's a phone. We have WNC uh, release three, this one release two, release three. Uh, we have Insego cellular router, we have Sequence Cat M1, and we have uh, uh, MBIoT, we have Essentials, we have QuickTel, and we have the Gemtech uh, CPE. Uh, you can see here, I'm not going to go through them one by one, but you can see, you can see that each of these has different uh, throughput, downlink throughput and uplink throughput. And uh, this is the technology and uh, this is the interface. As you see, we have USB-C, Wi-Fi, USB-C and Ethernet. Uh, and this is uh, different... Uh, uh, product, Ethernet, Wi-Fi, USB-C, all this available. This is to give you a view. So uh, eventually, if you uh, your application and you are looking in very high throughput that you want to test it, this is what available, like 1.5, 1.8 gig. If you are testing uh, MBIoT or CATM1, that's what is uh, available. So as you can see, it's a variety of different uh, devices with different uh, specifications that they are available and you can uh, use it. You can, all what you need is to uh, uh, reserve it first, uh, first uh, schedule the test, reserve it and so on. And uh, you, will, uh, you will find it that it's uh, ready with the cell side, with a SIM card uh, connected and uh, uh, then you can move forward. Um, I'm going to go quickly through the devices here one by one. Like uh, we have uh, Oppo Reno, it's 5G mid-band, sub 60, uh, 6 gig uh, hertz. Uh, it's uh, Android. Um, it's using a Qualcomm uh, SDM855 Snapdragon. Uh, and uh, this, uh, you can uh, go through quickly the specification or you can uh, uh, search, uh, search uh, for it. It's available uh, online. It's Oppo Reno 5G mobile. Next one, Insego 5G MiFi M1100. It's uh, 5G mid-band sub uh, six gig. Uh, it's again, uh, it's, uh, it's using uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon SM8150 and Snapdragon X50 5G. And this is the specification, uh, the specification. Um, the, the one thing uh, about it that we mentioned it to the SMEs that this supports ethernet as well. It's USB-C, Wi-Fi and ethernet if you need ethernet connectivity. The WNC uh, release uh, two, uh, uh, this is uh, also supports USB-C, it supports uh, Wi-Fi, um, uh, it supports uh, sub-6 six, uh, six gigahertz and 28 gigahertz. It's uh, available uh, whenever you need it. And we have WNC release three which is, uh, as you can see, the difference is the maximum data rate. This one is uh, up to one giga. The other one is up to 2.22 gigahertz. So uh, those uh, also available. And uh, the, also the, the, this one supports the millimeter wave while this one is uh, mid-band. Um, again, uh, this available, the specification are available uh, in the uh, hub with the tier one. If you want to have any, any, if you have any question, you can ask us or ask the tier one guys there uh, in, the, in, the, in the hub. Skywire Nimble Link CAT M1 MBIoT. This is the, this, uh, the kit is available. 
uh, for uh, whoever needs it. If you are testing CAT M1, MPIoT will provide you with the SIM card connected and ready for you. So that's uh, pretty much what I have uh, as a presentation. And uh, Q&A, 